Hi, my name's Patrick Muldoon, and I'm playing Lint Jones, the one and only Lint Jones, punk legend. So your character is in recovery or has just come out of a 90 day? I just made it 90 days mm -hmm. uh, towards my recovery, and I've given up crack and cocaine for red vines. Lint Jones, motherfucker. That is the creator of Lint Jones. So how much does, how much of Patrick is in Lint Jones and how much is he not? Unfortunately, quite a bit. Really? <laughs> like what parts? The music part. Mm -hmm. I've been a musician my whole life and acting's always paid the bills, but you know, music is, is my love. And you know, it, coincidentally, the, the owner of this house she goes, oh, were you in the band Sleeping Masses? And I go, yeah, I go, how'd you know? She goes, because we, when she was working at Universal, put some of the music in some of the shows. So anyway, so to this point, an unrecognized musician, un unlike uh, Lint, who really had his time in the sun as a punk rock god. Right. And, um, you know, tried his best, uh, tried his best at uh, two failed marriages. He's got three kids, um, one kid, has a restraining order against him, played by Shannon Doherty, and I haven't done those scenes, but I can't wait for that. A lot of chaos in, in, in Lint's life. But uh, this, this time out of rehab, which is about time number 10, he's really gonna try, because, um, uh, you know, this time when he cleaned up, he realized that he's out of time. How much similarity do you see between the musician temperament and the actor temperament? Are they Very similar? different. Very different, yeah. How so? Um, you know, there's there with actors, it's uh, you don't get together for fun and read lines. You know, you don't get to get together for fun. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? You know, let's read a play together. But musicians, it's hey, dude, you know, we're gonna be down at you know um, whatever rehearsal hall, hall down here in the valley, and and we're gonna jam. And so so there's. I'm not saying that musicians aren't competitive, they are, but it's more about the creation of the content of the song. It's about the song. So everybody loves um, to get together to make music. Um, acting is a bit competitive. And there is maybe, I don't know, do you think there's more narcissism in acting than there is in music, or it's the same I think same there's animal? plenty of narcissism in any field to go around, but, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not slamming actors because, but we are self-employed. It is, you are the, the product, so you have to take care of yourself, make sure you're taken care of, and, and so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit different. Of course there's narcissism in music. If you're lucky enough to, I'm very humble in music because I am not a rock star at the moment, but when uh, you get, uh, it's the old adage, um, you can tell who somebody is, not when they're at the bottom, but when they're on the top and they have the, the free will to do, to actually act. And that's when you're at the top, you see how somebody treats people. That's who they are. And Lynn Jones <laughs> evidently didn't, didn't treat people very well because <laughs> he's got to make amends while he's eating red vines. And so you are... This is the man right here. D Lynn Major! Jones. D, D, D Major! Major. <laughs> he's in a hip-hop portion of our show. And he's yes, your sir. sponsor, right? Punk Hop. And my sponsor. sponsor We're going to make a new kind of music. Punk... Punk... Punk Hop. Punk Hop. So he's trying to, you call him in moments of weakness? He's my sponsor. I just got out of the 90 day program. So, um, you know, you choose your sponsor and I, I chose D Major. And why is hilarious, Sheldon's great. <laughs> why does your character choose someone um, that's maybe turned his life over and I think he's a vegan and he's more like all natural, whereas you're still smoking. What, what, what is it that attracts? Well, it was to probably the, probably the music thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the music thing, I mean, you have to deal with, uh, you have to deal with it with specific things that the normal cat doesn't really have to deal with. 
you know. Sure. So that's why you have certain celebrity groups of AA and certain performer, you know, musician AA, you know, actors AA. Right. Because, because they're specific. You just have to kind of deal with different things that come with the territory and different temptations that come uh, with the disease. Sure. You sure. know, on tour, away from your wife, away from your kids, it's easy to, well, I'll just, uh, I'll just turn it up this one, <laughs> this one right. time, mm -hmm. you know, with the boys on the bus or in, in you know, some podunk, podunk town somewhere. So there's a lot of temptation because there's a lot of access. You have access to every, everything you want. So, um, so Lint has failed. And, uh, the, but the beautiful thing about what he's going through is with sobriety comes authentic emotions. You know, you can mentally try to change your life all you want, but if you, and you can't do it alone. So like D major, he has people around him pulling for him. And then, but most of the people, he has to go earn it again. Hey, pull for me on this last try. And he really thinks this is his last try. Does Lynn have trust issues? Does Lynn have trust issues? Yeah. Yeah. His manager, you know, it's the old story. His manager took his money. His manager took his publishing. He was on drugs. His, yeah, his writers and publishing have, have all been, somebody else owns them. Right. Um, probably would be a great time for Lynn to write music <laughs> at the crossroads. But it's, it, that's, what, that's what I like. Where he is, he's having authentic feelings for the first time, like a teenager would. He's in adolescence. Right, because he never progressed. He never progressed. Mm -hmm. He never had to. He was stunted. Yeah. And it makes you think. You know, you think of people that, you know, the famous rock and rollers who, who died, Jim Morrison, uh, Kurt Cobain, you know, at 27 years old. Right. What did you know at 27 years old? I was a punk kid at 27 years old. To have that kind of responsibility you know sure and you could see how it could how it could do people in so this is the story of somebody who was at the top uh and maybe some of the classics who unfortunately passed away the sid viciouses and darby crashes had they lived what would their families be like how many families would they have had where where are their children where is he uh, when the fame goes and when the fame comes back and his relationship to his addiction. So do you think part of Lynn's problem was self-sabotage? You think he felt like he yeah. didn't deserve any of it? Self-sabotage for sure. Who thinks they deserve it when they're on, t you know, I, it takes a real, somebody with real internal structure at a young age to be able to handle fame. And you can just open up your tabloid magazine. And it's all over the place. Not when you have access to everything, to really have the in, internal structure. Some people do it really seem to do it really well. I can't think of one right now, but <laughs> well, maybe they're sober, and that's the thing. For Lint, yeah. is he okay with then writing music when he's sober? Because so mm -hmm. much of no, creativity that's, comes. No, from you you have to you have to get used to having sex sober. You have to get used to having to writing sober. Mm -hmm. um, when you're in a, a position like Lint. And so, but the discovery of that is funny. It's funny. So this is a dark comedy about something really human, mm -hmm. but the, the emotions are really potent. Sorry. And you have to go deal with mom, who you've been lying to for years, but she's, <laughs> but, and, and, and damaged, you know, you damaged your mother and you have to walk, crawl in the door, you know, and ask for another chance. Each wife, um, uh, you know, one of the the character that Jolie Fisher plays is Debbie, who's really somebody who probably authentically loved him. Although they hooked up in the bathroom at the whiskey, you know, so she was a fan girl. So do who who knows, you know, uh, from where Lint, Lint's coming from and where people in this situation in life, famous famous people, how do you trust who loves you and who doesn't? You know. When were you presented with the script? I was presented with the script three weeks before, three weeks before. Um, how it came to, my manager called me, I think James, our director, was the one who brought me up, um, pitched me to the producers. 
And um, hey, Larry, I said call me Lint, man. I'm in character. <laughs> I'll be right there. Anything more you want to say? We'll wrap it up, Larry. Sorry. Right now? Yes. Okay. okay.